Hi, in this project I'm going to be uh, building a Nixie tube frequency counter. So, let's start with the uh, most basic uh, building block here is the CPU. And for that we're going to use a parallax propeller. And the reason for using the parallax propeller, you'll notice in a lot of my uh, projects I will use a Raspberry Pi, but the uh, propeller will give us the opportunity to do very accurate uh, frequency measurements whereas the Raspberry Pi would be a little bit uh, more difficult to uh, do frequency measurements just because it is usually running Linux and it's you know, a uh, multifunction uh, task switching uh, CPU whereas the propeller we're programming it in a spin and assembly we can get very deterministic behavior so that will be the CPU and then we're going to have two front ends high side front end these will go out to BNC jacks the high side we're going to use LMX2322 and the low side will use a 74HC uh, 40, 46. Over on this side, have a zero, one, two, three, four. So here we have a total of uh, eight Nixie tube digits. Um, these will be uh, I. N dash twelve and dash twelve and I N dash one five. So the IN twelve is a sort of a general purpose number display. The IN fifteen is uh, some symbol displays and they have to have a uh, one of them has a M and a K and some other things, the other one has a Hertz, so they will make a a nice uh way to show the units on our display. These boards I've used previously in my Nixie tube uh, calculator project and these will communicate via I to C. And of course we also need high voltage power supply unit delivering 160 volts. So the Nixie tubes need 160 volts DC to, uh, to function. Uh, so that's going to be the basic design. Oh, and then we have a one last part. We're going to have a range switch. So over here, this will be uh, let's call this uh, 25 megahertz to um, and over here we'll make this one uh, 100 hertz to. 32 megahertz. Uh, so you, as you can see, we have two different front ends for the uh, for the frequency counter. That because I want to get a range that goes from in the you know low numbers of hundreds of hertz. I was ideally going to get up to 2.4 gigahertz. My prototype only made it up to about 1.8 gigahertz reliably. So let's call it uh, 1.5 just to be on the safe side. Uh, so to get this full range we need to use two different techniques. Uh, the low range is going to use a 74HC4046 to, uh, to handle our detection and uh, sort of massaging of the, uh, the RF signal and then the prop can uh, count that directly. The prop, prop can easily count up to about 32 megahertz on one of the input pins. 
but the prop can't count all the way up to 1.5 gigahertz. So up here we're going to use a LMX 2322 prescaler. And the prescaler is going to divide this 128. So whatever frequency comes in this side of the prescaler gets divided by 128 and the propeller can easily count up to you know 1.5 gigahertz divided by 128 whatever that happens to be and then the range switch will let us pick between these two um, then the prop does the measurement and it will send out the I2C to the Nixie display modules where we will see on the digits um, that's going to be our project okay a quick rundown of everything I have sitting on the bench uh, for this demo over here is my uh, Siglent uh, function generator goes to uh, 25 megahertz in the middle is my uh, benchtop Nixie tube power supply currently uh, rigged for 158 volts here we've got the propeller professional development board the uh, two Nixie tube modules hooked up over I2C uh, back here is the TPI synthesizer that does uh, 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz. We'll use that to test the high range. And then over on the side is my uh, laptop, which I'm using to run the propeller development software and to uh, control the TPI synthesizer. Okay, let's take a quick look at the RF detector section. So this is the low low end uh, front end here. Um, it uses the 74HC4046 chip. Um, the input signal comes in via this SMA jack. I've got a couple diodes here to clamp it so it doesn't uh, overload the uh, signal. There's a 50 ohm terminating resistor, some DC bypass capacitors. Uh, power comes into it via these red and black wires. I believe I'm running it off of 3.3 uh, volts and the signal comes out on this yellow wire. I did put provisions on the circuit board for another BNC jack if I wanted to take the output signal out with a shielded cable instead of this uh, unshielded cable. Now the other one is over here. This is the LMX 2322. It's a very small uh, surface mount package. Uh, again you can see I have the signal going in through uh, through an SMA jack and I have provisions for the signal to go out through an SMA jack or out through just a pin. We've got a red and a black wire as before to power it. So the, uh, the LMX 2322 is configurable. You can set the divide ratio uh, via these three wires. There's a data, a clock, and a latch pin. It works sort of like a shift register so you you clock in your data configure the chip you can set the divide ratio I have uh, code um, that I'll put online in uh, github that describes how to uh, do that with this chip from a uh, propeller this is a propeller uh, professional development board using the propeller microcontroller microcontroller is this 40 pin dip uh, socketed up at the top um, yeah, this is made by Parallax. It's very easy to prototype and program. Um, back here you can see the Nixie tube display. These are the same modules I use for the Nixie tube calculator project. Uh, they're, I built them in uh, circuit boards that accommodate uh, four IN12 uh, Nixie tubes per board. Over here I've used an IN15A and an IN15B. Those are symbol tubes and they'll display, you know, M's and K's and Hertz's and Ohm's and, you know, various useful things for a project like this. Um, we have two different kind of uh, input chains. This one here is based on an LMX2322. That is our high range chain. Works from about 35 megahertz up to about uh, 1.5 gigahertz. Is what I've been able to get it to work at. And down here, this is a 74HC4046. That's our low range, goes from, you know, a few hundred hertz up to at least a good solid 25 megahertz. So let's uh, try it out. Let me go down to one uh, kilohertz frequency, one kilohertz. So over here on the side, let's see. Over there, 
off camera view is my Siglent uh, function generator. I set it to one kilohertz. You can see that the uh, frequency counter project is reading one kilohertz. We go up to 100 kilohertz. That's uh, working. Let's go up to 11 megahertz. It's good. 25 megahertz, that's where my uh, Siglent uh, function generator tops out. Uh, that's a sine wave, 25 megahertz. I can also do a square wave, 25 megahertz. It's about the same. Uh, this is 4 volts peak to peak. Um, let's run that down. There's 3 volts, 2 volts, 1 volt. Still working. 900, 800, 700, 600, 500, 400. Yeah, it looks like we need at least a good 500 millivolts at 25 megahertz to uh, to, to get a solid detection. Really, 600 millivolts is uh, is even better. Yeah, so let's try out the uh, the high uh, pipeline, and we'll switch the switch. We'll switch it over. Now we're using the LMX 2322. And back here I have something I bought called a TPI synthesizer. It is a, uh, a USB powered uh, RF uh, function generator. Um, it outputs square waves and it can do from 35 megahertz to 4.4 uh, gigahertz. So we'll try a couple frequencies. We've currently got it set to 35 megahertz. If we do, let's say, 900 megahertz uh, the function generator is working fine um, let's do 1500 megahertz it's able to do that I think we'll find if we try to go much more than 1.5 gigahertz so here's uh, 1.8 gigahertz I did that fine yeah, at some point it starts to have some trouble. 1.9 gigahertz. Hey, look at that, it's uh, still handling that. 2 gigahertz. There, 2 gigahertz. I couldn't quite make it up to there. And it, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't RF shielded this board here or anything, so I think it's possible that uh, we, you know, we could be picking up some stray interference, you know, maybe I need to do some RF shielding around that detector. And then maybe, uh, you know, I'd hope we could eventually get this thing up to a full 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency range. Okay, I have uh, assembled everything inside of a uh, plastic case that I had made at Pinoco. So it's uh, you know, similar to the cases on my other projects. I do have a top piece, which fits uh, like so. Take that off. Um, the front of it, I've uh, had this machined out with spots for the uh, tubes to fit in, the uh, high and low side uh, jacks, the uh, range switch. In here we've got the two front ends. This is the high side front end over here. That one and this one back here is the low side front end. I used a uh, parallax uh, proto board that I had left over to uh, implement the propeller. And over here is the high voltage uh, power supply. And of course you can see the back of the uh, Nixie tube drivers there. We've got the lines, the I2C and power lines to the Nixie drivers, high voltage to the display. Okay, frequency counter demo. Now I've got it hooked up to my Siglent uh, function generator. The generator's not actually on yet, so what we're seeing on the frequency counter is some noise. It is switched down into the uh, low range um, so let's turn it on it's currently set to one kilohertz as expected it displays one kilohertz let's ramp that up here's about 32 kilohertz working uh, as it should see a little bit of error in the least uh, significant digit let's go to one megahertz 
Uh, we see it says uh, 1 megahertz, 1000 uh, kilohertz. The way I've designed the software is that we'll switch ranges when we get to 1.1 megahertz. So if we go to 1.1, uh, then it displays 1.1 megahertz. Now it's in the megahertz range. Yeah, let's change that. And then there's uh, 10 megahertz. And let's go all the way up to 25 megahertz. That's the uh, limit of my uh, Siglent uh, function generator. Let's switch it to square wave. Square wave works just uh, just as well as sine wave. So to test the uh, high range, I have this hooked up to the TPI synthesizer again. It's currently off. Let's turn it on at 35 megahertz. See the switch is in the high range position. We're hooked up to the high range jack. Reading 35.008 megahertz. We've still got some error in that least significant digit to sort out. Let's try, uh, I don't know, how about 108 megahertz. 108 megahertz, working like it should. Let's try 600 megahertz. There we go, 600 uh, megahertz. We'll switch it up to 1,000 megahertz. So we've got 1,000 megahertz. Now if I switch it to uh, 1,100, 1,100 megahertz. Let's try going uh, 1,500 megahertz. Doing 1,500. 1,700. Oops, we have topped out at about 1600 megahertz. I still need to sort out why we uh, may be getting some interference or something. Hmm. Sort that out at some point. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.